This is the cheapest graphics card on Amazon. And yes, I mean this. It comes in a letter. So that's how you know it's going to be good. And surprisingly enough, it's not the GeForce 210, although that is pretty cheap. But it sometimes can be quite expensive on Amazon for some reason. So how do you find the cheapest graphics card on Amazon? So first you have to go to Amazon, type in graphics cards, then on the right side you have to click price to low, low to high. And then you scroll through to try and find a graphics card. Most of these are just like adapters and stuff, so they're not graphics cards. And once you get to the last page, because Amazon doesn't show all the pages, you have to type in the min price that you saw on the on the item, and then put it into the min price on the side so you can continue the search. And then once we've done that, now we can find this one. So this is a Rage Excel graphics card. And this is the one we bought. This is the cheapest GPU on Amazon. It costs a total of 9.99 great british pounds and that's like 12 or something dollars so inside of the box we have this and this is a video card a graphics card if you read there it says pci vga display card ati rage and yes, that did say PCI, not PCIe. So this is only using PCI. So that gives you an idea of how old this is. So I'm using the term graphics card very, very loosely here. And the reason is that this GPU does not have unified shaders, so it can't run many modern games. It only has one pixel shader with DirectX 6 support and OpenGL 1.1. It also has a massive eight megabytes of memory and just one VGA port, which we know pretty much is useless nowadays. So it comes in this nice bag saying cable high speed, USB 3.0 cable. It's nice. And then inside. So inside we have the graphics card. And open this up. And this is it. There's no heat sink. There's only one VGA. But that's all you need. The Rage XL was initially released in 1998, which really goes to show you how old this card is. And even in 1998, this wasn't a high-end card by any means. This was like the low end of the Rage series. It had a GPU clock speed of just 125 megahertz. To put that in perspective, an RTX 3060 has 1.32 gigahertz in, as the base clock. So that's 1320 megahertz, that's about 10 times the speed of this. But that doesn't mean that this is 10 times slower than RTX 3060, it's way worse than that. It has only one texture unit and one ROP. So as you might be able to tell, this is being sold as new, but it's not actually strictly new. So what they've done here is they've put this new, this old chip, they've reconditioned it and then put it onto a new board. So this is not the original uh, video card. So this GPU, the Rage XL, is apparently a die trunk version of the Rage Pro. So basically what that means is it's the similar or the same as the Rage Pro, but smaller. So it also means that it's pretty much just as shit as the Rage Pro, which isn't a great graphics card either. So this is usually used where you want to add a graphics card or add VGA ports or a little bit more functionality, but without costing too much. So as you can see, the performance of the Rage XL and the Rage Pro are pretty similar. So let's go through some quick specs of this graphics card. So it has a GPU clock, as we mentioned earlier, of 125 megahertz. Memory size of, I want to say only, but maybe not too bad, 8 megabytes. And that's clocked at 83 megahertz. And then we also have a memory bandwidth of 664 megabytes per second. So let's see how this performs in some games. So as I mentioned earlier, this only uses PCI. So you can't use these PCI Express slots. You have to find a motherboard with PCI. And luckily this Dell motherboard has one PCI slot that we should be able to use. Okay, so that actually clicked in quite nicely, and then we've got to use a VGA cable to plug this in, 
And then I'm going to record it with my phone because the capture cards definitely won't work with VGA. Okay, so will it work? No video input. Okay, so that Dell motherboard sucked, so it doesn't work for some reason. So I've got a new motherboard that we're going to use, the Zeus one, and hopefully it should work. Okay, so now that we're in the desktop, we can see the max resolution is 1024 by 768. It does actually support up to 1600 by 1200 resolution, but that's only at 16-bit color, which Windows 10 does not support. And it says that in the Amazon description that you need to use Windows 7 or below. There are no video drivers for this graphics card in Windows 10. So if you want to use graphics drivers, you have to download Windows XP or Windows Vista. But I don't really want to do that. So we're just using the basic Windows Microsoft basic display adapter low resolution. And that just gets installed by default. If you try and increase the resolution, you'll get an error and basically the display doesn't work anymore. So there's no way you can increase the resolution beyond 1024 by 768. So in some games now, we got Half-Life, the original one, and we got an average of 2 FPS with a max of 3 and 1% low of 1. So basically this is unplayable. I probably started off too high with the intensity of the games here. I think most of the games that are pre-1998 are kind of where this graphics card can perform okay. Okay, so next up we have Doom, the original one from 1993, and we got an average of 31.2 FPS, a 1% low of 16.7 and a 0.1% low of 16.2 FPS. So this game was actually playable, unlike Half-Life, and although 30 FPS isn't the best, I think it's still pretty decent for this graphics card. This game was released in 1993, which kind of shows you that this graphics card is not very good because it struggles to even get 30 FPS on a game that was released five years before itself. So next I tried Quake and Quake 3. So Quake gave an error about Vulcan. So I know this card is now Vulcan, but I didn't think it was needed. And then Quake 3 gave us an OpenGL error which this card does have OpenGL 1.1, so I'm not entirely sure what's the problem. Probably that it's just too old. So the original Crisis did actually work, and I wasn't able to get any FPS because it didn't work with the MSI Afterburner. But as you can see, it was pretty much unplayable. Maybe a couple of frames here and there. The game felt like it was being played in slow motion to be honest, because everything was so slow due to the lack of FPS. So another game that did actually work was Tomb Raider 2. There's no FPS for this because MSI Afterburner didn't work as well. But it was definitely playable and you can see in this video here that it's not too bad. It seems to perform okay. So just for comparison, I wanted to test the integrated Intel HD 4600 graphics. And so I ran the same test on Doom 1993. And using the same resolution, we got much, much higher FPS. So we got an average of 175.3 FPS, a 1% low of 107.9 and a 0.1% low of 105.5 FPS. So if you have a choice between integrated graphics and the Rage XL, you should definitely use the integrated graphics because they will way outperform the Rage XL. As long as they're maybe after 1998, they should perform quite decently, especially in older games. So overall, I wouldn't really recommend you get the Rage XL in 2023. And the reason is that pretty much any graphics card or any uh, integrated graphics would perform better. Unless you're still using really, really old hardware for the rest of your components, then it might be a viable option.